What's up, you guys? And welcome back to Tune In Tuesdays with your favorite gals, the H's. I'm Haley. And I'm Hannah. Let's get synced. Sisters, misters, theys, and themsters. If it is your first time, welcome. If you are returning, what the fuck are you doing here? Are you like, what's wrong with you? (laughs) (laughs) We're super stoked you're here regardless. You already snow. It's your fave, the H's. We got a jam-packed episode for you today. We're going to be going over um, a list of just ways to be more intentional with your day each day. Stay tuned because at the end of the episode, we are diving into some of the questions that have been submitted into our anonymous advice box on our link tree through our Instagram. Some juicy content in there. We have got, it's burning to get some answers given to these listeners. But let's go ahead and swing it out with a vibe check. How's your vibe, my babes? Man, the vibe is, (laughs) y'all almost said it. I almost said it. She's amazing. She's fabulous. Um, wow. <laughs> I'm still waiting on this compilation from a very special listener. <laughs> Hopefully, Harry, if you're listening, I know you have the capabilities of doing this. Yes. Could probably get it down to like an Excel spreadsheet of exactly when swell was said and then just boop, boop, boop. Yeah, I'm waiting, patiently waiting for anyone to put that together. But the vibes are high. We're just wrapping up all of the pre-Christmas errands this past weekend Mm -hmm. y'all feel me and everyone is out of gift bags so anyone listening if you've had success finding gift bags because i'm gonna keep it a buck 50 i love a nice wrapped gift but sometimes i don't want to have to wrap the gifts that are just clearly meant to go in a gift bag you know what i mean like you you can't wrap balls for children like you just throw it in a bag (laughs) (laughs) did you buy a lot of balls Haley? I I bought a few toys for the nieces (laughs) and nephews. So, um, you know, like things like that. I don't want to have to. It it just doesn't look good whenever you wrap stuff like that. So we were on the prowl for boxes. And I'm going to go ahead right now and let everyone know. I did not have a great experience with Walmart's curbside pickup. It's a waste. Don't do it. <laughs> they were like, I had oh. no hope anyways, to be honest. No, I, yeah, we should have known, but we were like, oh, it's raining. Let's get some our stuff curbside pickup. That sounds like a good idea. And then we get there and they're like, oh, everything's curbside except for the tissue paper. You have to come get that in the store. And I'm like, what the fuck is the point of curbside pickup? <laughs> I still and how can I not like curbside tissue paper? I don't know. So I just stick with Amazon. <laughs> they are way mm. more <laughs> reliable. But uh, yeah, yeah, we were just wrapped up, <laughs> pun intended, all of our <laughs> pre-Christmas errands and things. And we're just getting ready to travel. So really excited to do Christmas Eve and Christmas uh, in Yay. all the states. <laughs> all the states. <laughs> all the cities of North Carolina this week. And, um, yeah, just really getting ready for that. Otherwise, the vibe is high, Han. How's your vibe? Yes. You know my vibes are always up, 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 up. I never say anything besides high vibes anyways. That's fine. But we, as well, we just finished up our Christmas shop. We still have, like, a few things to grab. Mm -hmm. You know, those last-minute things that you're, like, waiting Last minute to get. (laughs) We actually just wrapped some stuff. And it's so funny that you're talking about um, like gift bags and wrapping and sometimes just easier. Listen, some of the things I've wrapped look like absolute shit. But I keep telling myself and I tell Zach, it doesn't really matter what it looks like because everybody loves that feeling of like tearing into paper. So like whatever, it can look horrible because you're going to tear it up anyway. So at the end of the day, I don't really care because the last time I checked on my driver's license, it does not say Martha Stewart. (laughs) So I'm not concerned. Um, So but I do have some odd shaped things that I've wrapped and it looks horrible. I mean, (laughs) terrible. Like my nieces could have wrapped better than this. Um, but it's the thought that counts. I'm telling myself that. Yes, absolutely. And so I haven't bumped into the gift bag thing yet. Yeah. Um, it's, because I just it's like rough a good, out here. I love paper. 
Yeah, I like it too. And there are some people that are really talented at gif wrapping, like on Instagram mm. and Facebook recently. I'm not on the TikTok, but I'm sure it's blowing up on there right now. All the yep. different ways to like wrap different items and things. Yeah, it can be done. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Some people just really go all out with the wrapping. They're doing their bows and the cute name tags. And mm-hmm. to be a professional rapper, you need supplies. And I don't have it. I've got scissors and tape. So I'm cutting with meat scissors, honestly. I'm not even going to try to. Kitchen scissors. Yes. <laughs> I'm cutting with meat scissors. <laughs> it is jagged as hell. It's good. It's fine. I mean, it's we're just really the way it is. In boxes. <laughs> Anybody I'm giving a gift to, just know, like, bing bong, your shit is arriving in the Amazon box Box that came to my door. Because I did not buy boxes because I had so many shipped that I was like, this is stupid to, like, purchase gift boxes. Just put it right back in there. So whatever, Amazon box. Come through. Come through with a box because that's it. Unless it's in a a box shape, you get in a gift bag. Yeah. And I'm going to ask for it back because I'm cheap. Yeah. (laughs) And we had talked in our last episode, um, this Effie's coming at you late this week because sis right here ain't even going to (laughs) lie. I don't know what fucking day of the week it is. I am on that weird time. I thought it was, I I just, I didn't know what time of the day it was. I dropped my phone, not dropped my phone. I'm in the sky. I have bottle service tonight. So does Haley. We're both sipping on that. Rosa. We need to set it off with a clink. Set it off with the clink. Delete me. (laughs) Delete me. (laughs) Clink. Oh my god. Cancel me. Hit the refill. Yes, yes, yes. Must. Um <laughs> not the not the bottle service. Got the bottle service. Uh but yes, I think the last noisy. minute Christmas scramble is just universal. I don't uh, think anyone's like really ever is. ready for Christmas. Except there are some psychos out there that have their presents wrapped like a month in advance and you have your life together to a level I will never mm-hmm. be able to achieve, but I one mm-hmm. day will maybe have all of my materials at yeah. least before Christmas Eve. But we'll see. <laughs> we actually did. I know in our last episode we had discussed um, just trying to do like I know I brought up more like personal items and we did mm-hmm. kind of focus on that this year so I loved gift giving that's my favorite part of the holiday season oh, same. I would love to just give people gifts rather than to receive because I feel same. immense amounts of pressure with receiving a gift down to the RBF I don't know what my face is doing when I'm trying to get <laughs> onto this tape like I'm trying but I don't want it to seem like it's <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So anyways, I love to give a gift. We're excited to do that this holiday season. But that's also, my favorite that's part. the thing that nobody told you is like the most stressful part. Like when you're little, whatever, fuck, you get all the gifts, right? You don't have to worry about anybody. No, so. I'm, I'm a big fan of a gift giving also. I went a little ham on Amazon because they just make it too easy. They make it way too easy. Too easy. And too easy. you don't really realize how much money you're spending because like – You know, back in the day when people went to this thing called a mall, um, (laughs) you actually like pick the things out and you could like hold them and you're like, oh, this is a lot of stuff. But Amazon is just like, oh, ninth item in the cart. It's it's Mm -hmm. fine. Scroll, scroll. Keep keep scrolling. So, yeah. Yeah. Very excited for the holidays, to say the least. So uh, excited for the holidays. Send all your wrapping instructions my way. <laughs> Please. I know. I saw this cool wrapping of how to do a Hennessy bottle. But before the holidays are completely underway, Haley and I were just brainstorming. And you don't have to wait until New Year's to, to begin something new in your life or to have some resolution and to, to label it as such, right? Like, you can begin these these daily bits of change just by being intentful. And we wanted to have an episode dedicated to ways that you can become more intentional with who you are as a person each day. But to me, it does sound like a lot of a New Year's resolution. Why does that have such heavy weight that it's like the the desire and the push to change, like you have to do it. Like it has to be labeled as such drastic measure and it has to be, and it has to be a measurable task. And if you don't 
achieve that, you don't feel success. I don't know. And it's always some diet bullshit, too, featuring some yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like, it's very weird how people are just like, you know what? The calendar's a uh, new year, so let's just go mm-hmm. ahead. And I think we need to start talking about, like, you can do that at any time of the year. It doesn't have to be right. January 1st. So right. um, we have some tips and tricks which i discovered on a blog that i was reading about ways to just be more intentional in your everyday life and we're gonna go through them i think there is 10 of them so we'll just going mm-hmm. to discuss them briefly you know the old sing sissy ping pang <laughs> you already know bing bong <laughs> fuck your life <laughs> Hey, yo, Ariana Grande, come to Coney Island, take a spin on the cyclone. <laughs> you know that? Yeah. You see these dogs in your yard? Just know upstairs I'm going hard. Bing bong. <laughs> what do you got to tell Joe Byron? What's up, baby? Take me out to dinner. Hey, yo. Okay, cancel me. I was already canceled before, and now I need to show that one I don't know what day of the week it is, and I know TikTok's verbatim. Let's just swing it. Swing, swing, swing. <laughs> With, without further ado, um, these are I'm ten drunk, tips. So buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> these are ten tips for how to be more intentional in your everyday life. And before we really get into the meat and taties, you might be asking, <laughs> <laughs> "Han, hey, what are you? What do you mean by being intentional?" And I would encourage anyone to go and read this blog. It's very quick. It's probably about a five minute read. It's on uh, simply fiercely.com mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. it just says jennifer i'm not sure what her name is but this was written in the last Jen. month or so she's been studying intentionalness i don't know what to call mm-hmm. it exactly but being intentional for it says seven years so she's a bit of an expert in this area but basically what she is saying throughout this article is people will get intention living with intention confused with being perfect and being intentional is not at all about being perfect in mm-hmm. reality, it's about being purposeful with your choices every day mm-hmm. and trying to become the best version of yourself, which, again, is not necessarily equivalent to perfection. It's just being the best with your time and your just emotions and where you put your mental state yep. and all these things, just giving that purpose. So she goes on a little bit more to describe how this is done and just basically, in a nutshell, she says... The recipe to being intentional is first you have to know what are your values, dreams, priorities, and goals, what gets you out of bed every morning, and what like makes you feel alive. Which for a lot of people, she even goes on to say, this is not something you just like wake up and you're like, oh, this is this is the purpose of my life. Like this is the whole reason she wrote the article is mm-hmm. you can be more intentional to get to a place where you know what your purpose is. But she says the next step after kind of identifying, you know what, this is what makes me feel most joyful, what gets me out of bed. Right. You have to ask yourself the question, am I spending my time, money, and energy in a way that aligns with what means the most to me? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, then these tips are for you. So we're going to buckle right on in to these 10 tips on how to be more intentional and more purposeful with your everyday life. So Han... If you want to pop off with numero uno, my sis, yes, take her yes. away. Yeah, so the first tip on this is to be more mindful of the media you consume. Media is all around us constantly. Restaurants when you go out to eat, in your pocket every single day, your pocketbook every single day, driving down the road in your car, literally everywhere. Billboards alongside of the highways. Though you can pick and choose everything media-wise that comes at you, you can filter some of it. And I'm so guilty at this one, I can't lie because I'm around some disgusting media by choice. Yeah. It's almost addictive in a way. Um, It's probably the hardest or will be the hardest for a lot of people that are listening. Yeah. Because the media is just like consumes our lives. Yeah. Um, everything is media. Like, <laughs> right. you can't even get on your phone without something you just talked about being on there. So it's kind of right. hard to escape in right. some Right. So aspects. it just kind of like, it just, it just boils down to being able to be mindful about mm-hmm. what you're absorbing. 
Mm-hmm. And to yourself and setting boundaries because anybody can just dwindle down that rabbit hole. We have all been there. Holy conspiracies. Must I say more? Um, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and just setting aside that time to be like, you know what? Uh, this brings me joy right now. No, it's not really doing much for me in the long run. But I can enjoy this for now and get a few laughs out of it. But it does need to be shut off at some point. Like it has to have it can't be limitless. Got to have boundaries. Yeah. Yeah, because I and think everyone. questioning how it serves you. Everyone likes a funny little video here and there. But it's like, ooh. Yeah. Maybe not spend like three hours doing that. <laughs> like, yeah. Just have some, some baby boundaries with the things right. you are consuming. Or just be mindful of the things that you're watching. Mm-hmm. And like, how is this affecting my mindset? Um, right. Kind of segueing into the next one is choosing to be kind and they offer this quote which i thought is really just kind of wraps it up it says do things for people not because of who they are or what they do in return but because of who you are it's from harold kushner but basically when you're choosing to be kind like that is an intentional act you are going Mm -hmm. out of your way to do that you could very well just snap on somebody or be nasty if you want but if you value kindness you should look for ways to to do that and to be kind and to spread kindness into the world and we've said this before on the cast but it karma 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 it will come Mm -hmm. back tenfold so when someone cuts you off in traffic this is probably the biggest lesson for me i'm gonna intentionally just try (laughs) Not to curse them out or throw them the bird like I want to. And maybe just, you know what? You right. Know what? Maybe they're having a hard day or they didn't really mean to cut me off. They've got something on their mind. Just let it go. Little things to be a little more kind. If that is the person you are, project that into the world. Yeah, because it's a choice. And, oh, baby, it's a hard choice sometimes. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I am not going to lie. I mean, it hard. does make you feel better when you choose kindness. As, as as much as that that little devil on their shoulder is like Mm-mm, throw that bird Mm-mm, honk because that sometimes horn sometimes you're like <laughs> i realize after i honk my horn or something i'm like i let them win yeah they won they got what they wanted they wanted me to be mad yeah that's so, why sometimes i give them the old the, i blow them a kiss <laughs> that really throws everybody like, <laughs> still kind acknowledging but yeah. still kind <laughs> All right, so on to the next one. Do something that brings you joy. I think this is one of the simplest intentions that everybody has every single day. I don't think that anybody starts their day without the mindset of, okay, what is something that brings me joy? And seeking joy each day, even if it is just for a small moment of time. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, like I have this short window in, in my morning, during my working mornings, and it's like from... 5.50 5.50 a.m. to 6, 6 a.m., 6, 10 a.m. And that's like my only time to like drink warm coffee, drink hot coffee out of a coffee mug. That's silly, but it brings me joy. It makes me happy. I enjoy that. And it's, oh God, we live in this society where we're expected to put our working life before our personal life. And it, it's sad, but sometimes what brings our joy, what brings us joy is placed on the back burner. So that's a hard question for adults. I remember one time I sat down with Zach and he just asked me, I was in, this was a couple years back and I was just kind of in a funk and he said, what makes you happy? Like what makes you happy in your day-to-day life? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a tough thing to, to kind of process sometimes is figuring that out on your own, Mm -hmm. not just for the moment. Like I think honestly, we're so mindless sometimes that the, that things that that are so irrelevant bring us joy, like temporarily. But if we sit back and we're like, does that really bring us joy? I don't know. So it's kind of just becoming more in tune with yourself and, you know, sometimes people like material joy, sometimes people like mental joy. I mean, it, 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 I don't know, everybody's so different, so. Yeah, and I think I like the fact that in this blog she talks about, like, something bringing you joy doesn't have to be the whole day. Like, the whole day doesn't have to be consumed by joy, but take, like, a few yeah. minutes and do something that does bring you joy. Like, for Hannah, it's the, her cup of coffee in the morning for me it's probably yeah. like my, my hot shower <laughs> like yeah. just take a few minutes to be like i this this is what gets me going like just be yeah. intentional and acknowledging about- it and acknowledging when that moment occurs you chose it for yourself and it makes you happy 
Yep, got to make yourself a priority, honey. Yeah, can be small, small. Small, small. On to the next one. This is, <laughs> uh, speaking of all the Burr, shopping. Skip <laughs> this one. <laughs> <laughs> all the shopping that has just happened. It says, ask why before you buy. Now, normally, truthfully, this is not an issue for myself because I just tend to be kind of frugal um, by mm-hmm. nature. But when it comes to other people, oh, p- here you go. Take all my money. But um, anyone that out there that you might just tend to fill a void in your life or when you get down, you you resort to retail therapy. Maybe this is one for you to be a little bit more intentional with your purchases. Again, in no way am I telling you don't buy what you want to buy. But this blog does say, you know, maybe if you are finding that you are collecting all these things and they're not bringing you joy, to be a little bit more intentional with those purchases, you might want to start right. thinking about your money in terms of time. Like, oh, that sweater or those concert tickets or whatever I'm about to buy. I had to work four hours to get this item or do this certain thing is is that Mm -hmm. worth your time in the grand scheme of things are those shoes that are three hundred dollars worth your four days of work or whatever however long it takes you to acquire the money to buy that item and i think that just boils down to like material things can bring you joy but maybe only to like a certain extent like is it worth you know are we equating i don't know I, i just like that you're thinking of it in terms of time, like, is this really making sense to me? Not because of the dollar sign in front of it, but because of how much work I had to put in to get that that item. So if you think that maybe you are collecting things and they're not bringing you joy, ask yourself, is it worth my time instead of is it worth my money? Because I think that you will find more often than not, no, that sweater that was $45 was not worth the three hours I had to work to wear it. So um, right. just something to, to keep in mind when you're out there purchasing. Uh, <laughs> if you're just looking mm, to downsize. I definitely, yeah, a bitch right here. I cannot give advice on that. Like, no, 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 no. I, this I, is- I'm the worst. I, I'm like mental illness up for that because I'll get in like <laughs> the smallest inconvenience will happen and I go fill my fucking cart like that just brings me so much joy (laughs) even if I never buy it I just fill that bitch up yeah and if that resonates with you also you should check out Marie Kondo because she talks about how all these material things spark quote-unquote joy in our lives but in the reality we're just holding on to them for whatever reason I don't know she goes into much more detail listen we can just we can just toss the double zero pants at this point. Yeah, <laughs> no one's. <laughs> You're not squeezing back into those, okay? Uh-huh. No, <laughs> just get rid of them. Seriously. All right, and the next thing, um, this is this is something I really have tried to be more mm. intentional with. This is practicing active listening, especially. With ADHD, sometimes I can hear something in a conversation and my brain is goodbye all the way across the world mm-hmm. or on a, in, a, in, a, in a different galaxy sometimes even. Um, <laughs> but to be more intentional in conversations is to practice active, reflective listening. Actually mm-hmm. listen to someone. Um, I think a lot of the times when I have conversations with friends and they hold a lot of value, I think I go into it and I'm like... Is this a situation where you're seeking advice or you just need a listening ear? Because I can be both, but I don't, I don't want to cloud their mind with what I think I'm going into, if that makes sense. So in the conversation, like, I want to make sure I know what, what they need from me as the other side of the conversation. (laughs) um, I'm the worst. You know, just, I know I suck too. And I really think it is my unmedicated ADHD. And it's a way of connecting. Like, that's just how I connect with people is such a conversational level. And we've done it, too. Like, just the connectivity. But yeah, um, big, big struggle area for myself, because I'm like, oh, you're going through a hard time. Let me share an experience where I went through something similar, where it's like, they're not looking for my story, Haley. They didn't come mm -hmm, to you for mm -hmm. your story. They came to you because they just want you to listen. And I I like the fact that in this little blog, she says active listening is 
is about listening to understand instead mm-hmm. of listening to respond. And that's what I do. I just respond. I'm like, oh, 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 okay. That's right? really bad. Let me tell you about a time I went through something similar, which is like, yep. has no relevance. They didn't ask. <laughs> no one asked for my, Nobody asked. my story, but here I am like, uh, and then I, what I end up doing, right, is I'm telling them about something similar. And then I go down a rabbit hole about mm-hmm. something that has nothing to do with what they originally came to mm-hmm. me for. Horrible. I do this same way too much. And I, I realize I'm doing it when I'm doing it. And then I'll reel it back in for like two seconds. And then I get excited about something they said. It, it's just, it's a cycle. So. <laughs> yep. And then she also states that you can show people in your life that you care about them by actually res- listening. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> listening to what they have to say and really resisting to the urge to surround that story around yourself and making a personal connection to it. And instead of thinking about what you're going to respond with or how you're going to, you know, keep the conversation going is doing your best to understand their point of view. They're telling you something for a reason. So mm-hmm. like really like take yourself out all engulfing. Yeah, just full fledged listen to it. Think about how would I feel if I was them or this. And me personally, excuse me, I my rosé is bubbly, you guys. So as you know, <laughs> fluxing hard, fluxing hard. <laughs> Sometimes my favorite thing to do is to um, – I enjoy conversations more when mm-hmm. I don't know where they're going next. If mm-hmm. I make that connection and bring it back to myself, I always know like, oh, here we are, back at Hannah. Like – and as I've gotten older, I realize I don't really care to be back at that point. Like, but I do have con- like connection, connectional conversations because it's like they say something and then it's a snowball of something that I've, that I've been through before. Yeah. And then I'm like, do they need to know that this is okay? Like, and then I like overshare and whatever. Cause something about, so me I'm trying to do like- better with that. Something about me is like, oh, reassuring them that they're not the only one is the best thing to do. Mm-hmm. But really, it's just like they just want you to listen to and understand. Listen, <laughs> straight up honest moment right here. Me and one of my best friends, Christian, he was on one of our episodes in season one, our LGBTQ plus episode. Um, we got in an argument one time because he was just like, why do you always bring things back to you? And I did not know that I did this until he mm. full fledged like stepped up to me and was like, not everything's about you. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, know. <laughs> I didn't know that I did this. I really didn't. I thought it was like a connection thing. And then he, and, and I explained to him, I was like, dude, I did not do it for that purpose. That was not my intent. Right. I'm really sorry. But now we have that level of understanding. But before I express like who I was in a conversation to him, it was, you know, surface level conversation with somebody, listen to them. Try to understand their point of view without trying to find your own connection. Yeah. And honestly, like, no one's ever called me out, but I know I do it. And the only reason I know I do it is because I have read things about this particular topic, like Mm -hmm. this blog, for example. And I'm like, oh, my God, that is me. Like, the blog called me out. But yeah. Um, yeah. And, And maybe we just need to start telling our friends that, like, hey, I came to you to vent. I understand you have a personal mm-hmm. connection, but I really just want you to to hear me out for a second and and hear them out. Just that's what they're they're wanting from you. So <laughs> I hear that rose yeah. just just a bubble. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Okay, so that ain't rose, next- that's mama's <laughs> Alka Seltzer. <laughs> I'm gonna I, need, I need some one. fucking Alka Seltzer. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, so the next one is, she's real cute, short, and to the point. This is something I think everyone should do, and I don't do, but I would like to make, again, more intentional for myself, Mm -hmm. is make time for self-reflection. They say making time for self-reflection is absolutely essential for intentional Mm -hmm. living. It is how you know you are on the right track. So... Our gal Jennifer here, she recommends just taking a few minutes every single day and ask yourself, 
you know, is my schedule, the way I'm spending my time, is the way my home looks reflecting my vision or how I want? Hell no, because life is exhausting (laughs) and it's messy as hell. Right? No, Jen. Sorry, Jen. (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But she wants us to reflect on... Am I putting my time and energy towards those goals that I've set for myself and asking yourself each day, did I did I do something that's going to move me forward in that direction? And if your answer is no, right. maybe you need to reevaluate how you're spending that mm-hmm. time and spend a little bit more time on this or a little bit less time on that. But just being able to take a moment of reflection and not just for that day, but the next day. Oh, you know mm-hmm. what? I didn't, you know. I didn't show kindness to someone today. I'm going to reach out to my friend and just give them a phone call, see how they're doing. Set an intention for the next day. So that way you are improving on what you might have not been able to accomplish that current day. So just reflect and check in with yourself. So not to bring it back to me, (laughs) (laughs) but this is something, this is one of the things that I am trying my hardest on right now because... Um, I'm fully aware of the positive gain and benefits of just a daily reflection meditation, starting first thing in the Mm -hmm. morning, setting aside that quiet time, really reflecting on your day. Um, because a lot of the things that you encounter, like you, you, you speak your day into existence and how you approach Mm -hmm. your day, even changing things from, Oh, I have to do this. No, like I get to do this. So I include that in self reflection, but I, I, I'm lazy as fuck in the morning. I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't really... I'm tired. If I meditate, I'm probably going back to sleep. Right. So I need to find a better guided practice to get me in a a mental space of accepting this this self-reflection. I don't want it to be something where it's... I, I want it to be first thing in the morning. So instead of thinking like... Oh, like I didn't show kindness today. Like I want to go into my day thinking like, no, like this is how you're going to approach these situations today. Because sometimes you just wake up pissed off. You snooze twice. You're in a bad mood. You got to take the dog out. You got to feed him. You got to do this. Like whatever. Ran out of dry shampoo. So it's like, I want to do it in the morning, but it's like, it's early and I'm a piece of shit. And I'd rather sleep. So if anybody has any more like suggestions for me personally on this, just this journey of my own to be more intentful in the morning, like if the AM time is your time, I'm such a morning person anyways. Um, I'd love more suggestions on that. Come our way with the suggesties for sure. Come my way. <laughs> this is Fetty, Fetty Wap. <laughs> Fetty, Fetty Chicky Nefrido. So... This next one honestly can be interpreted many different ways, but do something you can be proud of. I think that is is very vague. Like, mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. physically proud of, emotionally proud of, intellectually proud of, mentally proud of, like aesthetically proud of. Like there's so many different ways you can be proud of yourself and that comes back to what do you like? What brings you joy? What what sparks your creativity? And in this article, it just states like, put down your phone during a conversation and do something. Like actually do something, physically do something, mentally do something um, just for a few minutes and don't worry about things that you're not getting to. Yeah, I like that she was like, stop worrying about everything that you're not doing mm-hmm. and celebrate like... The- those daunting to-do lists really creep up on us. Yeah, they do. And she basically just wants the takeaway to be, like, celebrate the th- small things that you did do and not the ones that you haven't gotten to yet. Like, that can mm-hmm. still happen, but you need to celebrate your small little victories throughout the day and be proud of yourself. And, like, give yourself some kudos because if you're going to line up all these things that you haven't got to to, like, the three things that you might have been able to sneak into your schedule that day, like, you're going to yeah. have a negative reaction because you're going to feel like you didn't do anything. And when reality, getting out of bed is step one and you you did that Mm -hmm. be proud of yourself for doing that like celebrate the small victories and this just kind of segues into the next point which is question your have to's so it's basically Mm. the idea of 
why do we feel like we have to do certain things every day? Like she goes on to write about there are things like that we have to do, like Mm -hmm. feed ourselves, feed our dog. (laughs) Like, yeah, there's so many other things and like this noise around us that basically is just like, you have to do this, have to do this, have to do this, have to do this. And it's like, who told us that? Like, where does that idea come from? Because in reality, right. like your have tos are, are probably not as long as you think they are. And right. she says, question, basically, who told you these things had to be done? Look at it with a, a magnifying glass. And just because someone else told you this had to be done doesn't mean that that is necessarily right. a good fit for you. So right. this question, this question's from my mother. <laughs> if my mom's listening to this, my ass is grass. But <laughs> <laughs> this question's for my mother. Mom, my dishes in my sink want to know what's wrong with you? Like, why could the dishes never live in the sink growing up? What was that? Like, wh- what was the deal? Like, was that a have to? No, because my dishes are fine, babe. <laughs> Right. And I mean, if that day you needed to catch up on a show for your mental health instead of do your dishes, give yeah. yourself permission to do what you need to do, not do it because someone else told you it had to be done. And I think that's honestly a good example is that like when you grow up, you're ingrained with all of these things. It's like you have to do this. Your room always has to be clean. Your laundry has to be done. Your bed has to be made. And it's like, you know what? Says who? What, yep. what rule book? <laughs> like, yep. Give yourself permission to do the things that suit you. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> we all just live off this rule of, oh, because someone said to. Who? Who? Who is it? Oh. Don't know. I mean, I yeah. Like she said, first step is start asking questions. Like, why yep. do I have, like, if it is not serving me immediately or it is not dire. Getting you attention the next yeah getting you to the next phase even and, and and i think this also goes into it can wait i love mm-hmm. the saying it can wait or tomorrow is another day because it truly can i think we get so bogged down with things and it's like oh do it right now mm-hmm. instantly and it can wait it really can um and that jumps into prioritizing rest and self care Sometimes our rest and self-care is postponing things that we're not necessarily wanting to deal with right then and there. Sometimes rest can look like someone laying down taking a nap. Sometimes Mm -hmm. rest for someone who isn't a napper like myself. Sometimes rest is just sitting down, doing absolutely nothing, letting the sink fill up with dishes, letting the floor collect hella cat and dog hair and just (laughs) dust and whatever else. And then self-care can be something like, oh my gosh, it's not a trip to the spa. Like for me, self-care is filing my nails, reshaping my nails, um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. cutting my cuticles back, doing something like that myself, doing a foot soak, um, reading a couple pages of a book that I was really into. I mean, really, you you find your own self-care. So I Mm -hmm. think that list is kind of vague as well because it, it depends on each person. Sometimes coloring in a coloring book. Sometimes doing a sound bath. Yeah, I I think that you can't keep going if the battery's on empty. If you're no. on zero, you gotta... None of this that we've mentioned thus far matters if you are not taking care of yourself. So yep. whatever that is, whatever that looks for you, if it's mm-hmm. reading a book and having a glass of wine and that recharges your battery, do it. But you're not going to get anything on this list done if you don't take care of yep. yourself. That's numero uno. I, I know and these I really are in no love, order. <laughs> right, right. I really love that she said in the article that Practicing self-care without it feeling like it's something else on the to-do list, that's like the top part. Because is it self-care if you feel like it has the heavy impact of I've got to do this right now? No, because your self-care is like, it's kind of like a treat. It's like a little reward, right? Mm -hmm, Now, mm -hmm. self-care isn't going and getting a $6 coffee when you have to do like the most minimal error. Errand, not error. Error, (laughs) error. (laughs) Getting that expensive ass coffee after having to like run around, like, "Mm, yeah, that's self care too. Who am I fucking kidding? (laughs) (laughs) Spend it, spend it. If it sparks joy, 
Yeah. Seriously. Just be intentional about it. Be intentional. Make sure that it's getting you to where you need to be, God. you know? <laughs> and we know, like, it can be so hard because we're busy. I think busy. we, we as a, a race, like a human race, like, we're just busy. Mm-hmm. Um, but setting time aside for yourself and really giving yourself rest and care is just, like, you'll build a new relationship with yourself in a way. And I think yeah. it's important to do. And I think, I don't remember if it was this point or kind of a sub point under another point, but she mm-hmm. emphasizes in this blog, like, you don't always have to feel like you need to be doing something. Like, right. You, that's not true. Like, you don't, you can do nothing. Like, being, just doing nothing is fine. And that's kind of how I do my self-care. I just do nothing. I just veg. Mm-hmm. I just chill. And that's what makes me feel better. So... If you're one of those people and you just find yourself like, I'm not doing anything. I feel like I need to be doing anything. Put down the guilt. Put down the shame for just chilling and just Mm -hmm. enjoy it because you need it. I agree. Got to recharge your battery. All right. Our final point (laughs) is know when it is time to let go. Now, this is deep. This could go Mm. so many different ways. but So many different ways from like just personal relationship uh, mm-hmm. professionally there there's a lot of different avenues for this one point yes and i think the main point she wants to make here is no one it's time to let go but like be active about it be intentional mm-hmm. about what you're letting go of i mean you can cut off a friend by just ignoring them or yeah. you can um you know just kind of be more passive about things that you're letting go of but do something intentionally. Let go of it intentionally. It says you need to stop holding on to the things that weigh you down. And that can be like the clutter in your house. Or it can be just the thoughts in your mind. And kind of act on them. Like focus on these, the fact that these things are a distraction. Or they're keeping uh-huh. you from reaching your goals. So actively yep. go out. Declutter your home. Let go of some of those things that are just sitting your double zero pants from sixth grade. <laughs> Let go of them. <laughs> and more than anything, she said you need to practice self-forgiveness. And Ooh. that is very intentional act to do to forgive yourself for something that you've done or something that you've said. And it takes practice. You know, there, she doesn't go into many... She does offer a link for some tips on how to do this. I didn't get too much into it, but basically just small things you can do is intentionally just write out what bothers you Mm -hmm. and just practice not letting that get into your head. And we preach this all the time, but she cannot stress this enough. And this one point is stop comparing yourself to everyone else be intentional about being the, the best version and trap in, the comparison the trap, <laughs> trap. we talked about this yeah so we have to be more intentional and practice loving ourselves instead of comparing the haves to the have nots and it's hard but being passive about it and not being intentional with it is is really just i think we think that that's gonna work but sometimes you just gotta face the things head on Mm-hmm. recognize them and say you know what you don't serve me or this isn't getting me to where i need to be so peace out i'm gonna let go of it and move on so um practice 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 and all these yeah. things in conjunction with one another hopefully will make you feel a little bit more yeah. intentional with your time your mental state your emotions and all all that good stuff and our intention is that you just pick up one of these things Mm-hmm. Don't try to hit up. Don't be a heavy hit on old Tim right now. <laughs> Come back to this episode. Come back. <laughs> Pick one right now. Change it. I'm really focusing on that setting a purpose for my day and setting time aside in my mornings to meditate and get my day started on the right foot. Because if not, yep. I'm just a sour puss. There you go. Pick one. Yo. Roll with it. One at a time. I cannot. Small steps. We can't put this off anymore. We have got to get into our advice box. Do you have it Y'all, pulled up? We've got I to get in our, there. our box pulled up. So anyone yeah. that is wondering if you would like to leave a question as well, jump into the link tree. Our anonymous advice box yes. is on and popping any Please. time or day. So we're going to answer just two questions from our advice box today. And the first is this. I'm going to read it aloud. Need more no names. 
no names included. No, no names ever included. Ever, 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 ever. So, uh, we don't, we wouldn't even have a name unless you told us because it's anonymous. Right. But yeah. um, this question says, or I guess scenario is, it'll be five years in February that I have been in a relationship with my boyfriend. I know deep down inside he is my person and that I want to marry him. But it seems like we will never get married. I see lots of my family and friends getting engaged, getting married, and having kids. And part of me feels like I'm way behind. Any advice? Oof. Heavy. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that is just, we, that needs to be dissected in itself. Like, there's just different, it's just I think this episode was for for them. (laughs) Yeah, I think so as well. So... Oh my God. I think my first bit of advice in this is to be open, right? With your Mm -hmm. partner. If you guys have been together for five years, five plus years at this point, there is absolutely nothing wrong with sitting down to have a conversation about your stance on longevity Mm -hmm. of your relationship. Actually Mm -hmm. talking about like, what is the next step? And that that doesn't mean sitting down and being like, I want this. I want marriage. What's next? Right. It's sitting down and being like, What do you envision for yourself when it comes to us uh, Mm -hmm. five years from now, 10 years from now? What does that look like for you? So it doesn't have to be such a harsh conversation because that's a tough combo to have. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it can be intimidating for sure. But I think, you know, even if it is intimidating or a little uncomfy, because I can imagine like maybe you're not prepared for what they might say or whatever the case may be, but you you owe yourself a response. Yeah. You have shown them, hey, I've put five years into this relationship. I'm obviously in it to win it. Uh, Are you? And if you haven't had that conversation yet, you owe yourself that reassurance. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side of the coin, um, hopefully this episode will help you because what I am reading is, you know, you are comparing yourself to the people around you. And I Mm -hmm. think that that is just a normal human reaction. Like, why is this person not putting a ring on my finger when so-and-so has been dating for a year and a half and they're getting engaged? But at the same time, I think you're stealing joy from that relationship that you're in. Um, You know that they're your person. You know you want to marry them. Um, And it seems like things are going well, if that is the case. But you might be stealing joy from that relationship and just living in the moment because you are worried about what other people are doing but Mm -hmm. again i see both sides because i would also be frustrated if someone was not putting a ring on this finger after five Mm -hmm. years so again i think my advice would be have that conversation if you haven't had it already but also try not to let everyone else is doing bother you because you are on your own path and you're you're on your own path yeah you're gonna compare you will eventually i think if you keep feeling this way you're going to become resentful towards your partner because it's not going to be about oh what's best for us it's going to be right why are why am i not that other person or why are we not them or Mm -hmm. why you know it's gonna start i think manifesting in really unhealthy ways in the relationship so yeah have the conversation if you haven't already and just let them do them but then on the flip side it's like you know your worth and it's just like piss or get off the pot. 100%. And that's what I'm saying. If you haven't had the conversation already, and I realize, like I said, it can be very uncomfortable. You deserve that answer. You deserve a response. You deserve it. Hey, hey, we've been together for five years. Obviously, I'm here because I love you. Where do you see this going in, in the next five years or so? Just kind of for myself. And shout out to, to the two of you for even dating for five years. I mean, that's, <laughs> that itself is like... All right. I mean, one of y'all is either a really good actor or like the next. I mean, there's just more logistics to it. So also thinking about that is. Yeah. I mean, you deserve a response at this point if you've held on for that long. Um, It would be pretty crappy of them to string you along for so long with no intention of pouring back into that relationship in any capacity beyond what you have going on currently. So Mm -hmm. I would have that conversation and try to block out what everyone else is doing and not see it as a problem with your relationship, but the fact that you guys are just on a different path. And right. who knows? Who knows? Guy, guy. And my favorite, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? My favorite thing to ask people is, is it really what you want next? Or is it what you, what is 
socially bestowed upon you. Like, you're saying, like, this is a lot of your friends are doing this. Like, evaluate their relationships. Like, why are they doing this? Like, just always making sure that it's what you want. Checking back in with yourself. All right. And the next, what else on that? Closing? Oh, I was just going to (laughs) say, to the the last part, you said, part of me feels like I'm behind. You're not behind. You're right where you need to be. Just find peace in knowing that it will work out and all will be well. So I feel have the conversation all the time when it comes to like different things, aspects of life. I feel like we all do just it's it's having the conversation like you said. Girl guy, whoever's writing, I don't know. But I I, know this is hard. I'm I'm 26. I feel you. I have tons of friends that are married, have a kid or pregnant, whatever. I'm not married. I've been dating a guy for a year and a half. Am I going to get engaged soon? I don't know. Yeah. In ways I do feel behind, but at the same time, I feel like I am right where I'm meant to be and things will work out as they will. So you just have to have faith that it will all come together. Mm Mm-hmm. That is so true. I when when I was in that place of behind, I am I was dating a person long term at that point. I thought I was behind, thought I wanted marriage, and it turned out like I didn't at that time. And it, it's 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 crazy what nobody's behind. Behind Mm-mm. in what? Dying? That's what we're all fucking lining up to do. You're behind in dying? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that it's also like a societal expectation that like, oh, you haven't found your person by the time you're 24. Like you're not married Uh-oh. by the time you're 25. You haven't had kids yeah. by the time you're 30. Like you're behind. And all of that is arbitrary. None of that means anything. Mm. <laughs> like, it this means is just nothing. pressure put on to you yeah, by external forces. So do you, it'll be fine. All right, sis, this next one, you ready? Oh, shreddies. Hi, H's. I recently started seeing someone new, and they have expressed their interest in being intimate with me. I have been fooled in the past regarding an individual's sexual health, and I want to be sure that I'm being safe. How should I tell this person that I would like them to be tested before we become intimate? I'm scared that by asking, I might scare them away. What do you recommend? (laughs) Woof. She's dense. <laughs> <laughs> this person really sat there and thought through it and thought like, okay, I'm going through these things, but I want to make sure that I have all the boxes checked and I'm going about this the right way because clearly this person cares about the other individual or mm-hmm, else they wouldn't mm-hmm. be writing to us in the first place. This person wants to get sexual with other person <laughs> or it wouldn't be a question of like, why am I second guessing this? Like, is this wrong? So what do you think, Haley? I think that this individual is smart. Um, Mm -hmm. I think you always have to prioritize yourself and assume that everyone else is lying to you. Sorry. Um, (laughs) That's the truth. Lying to you. (laughs) I I think that people in some respects will tell you what you want to hear. And as bad as that sounds, I feel like you have to do your due diligence Mm -hmm. and take everything else with a grain of salt. And Mm -hmm. again, this is probably just another very uncomfy situation you need to have and frame it as, hey, it's not necessarily that I don't trust you, but there's been people in the past that have burned me and have lied to me. So I, it's not the fact that I think that you would do something like that, but I'm going to do this and I would appreciate if you did it also, because it's unfair for you to ask something of someone else that you're not willing to do yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think if you were, what I would do personally is say, I would like to take the relationship to the next level as well, if that is what you would want from me. But I think before we do that, it's in our both our best interest to have a more enjoyable and sexually satisfying relationship to know that we are healthy and we are fine. Yes. And um, I love that. Po- I love that point. I love that point because to achieve your highest level of just comfort sexually, you you have to be open and honest. Mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine the thought of sleeping with somebody and thinking, oh my God, did they just give me X, Y, Z? I don't know. Right. ABCD, STD, EFG, HIJK, element of P. And for those of you that don't know, you don't even have to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't even have to go to the doctor anymore. You can order a test from online, yeah. swab, swab, send it mm-hmm. back, and they'll send you re- your results. And maybe you can either just ask them, hey, I make an appointment for myself. I'm going to share my results with you so that you feel better about Mm -hmm. us moving forward. I would appreciate if you do the same. And if they're not willing to do that, 
one, they probably have something to hide, red flag, or two, mm-hmm. they just don't care about you in the capacity that they want to pursue a meaningful relationship anyway. So next. Yeah. Thank you. That's that. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think that if you guys are at a point and you're feeling so passionately dedicated and driven to this topic and to this person and you can have this open conversation and you want to take it to the next step, I think that all parties involved will see it the same because respectfully they they want to comfort you with that reassurance like no i'm ready for the next level and i will like boom here sign sealed delivered pop right from the doctor was Sign-sealed good sealed delivered <laughs> exactly <I know. laughs> yeah i i i just think it's what a tough day and age every single day i'm just i'm so happy that i'm married but just, i guarantee you i guarantee you you'll be so happy you did mm-hmm. it will be a weight lifted i think because- so and and just continue practice one shout out to this person continue practicing safe sex and standing behind your 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 beliefs for yourself um and not minimizing that for somebody else just based on this might be a question for dr h maybe she'll have some more advice for you but yeah yeah, safe safe yeah she'll definitely have more (laughs) advice in terms of like speaking with your partner about being sexually smart I mean, and that's what it boils down to. Safe sex is great sex. Sexy. (laughs) Yeah. If you have any further questions, relationship-based or otherwise, slide into the advice box because we love, we love to answer your questions. And if you enjoyed our intentional episode on being more intentional, (laughs) (laughs) give us us Mm. some stars on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, and check in with our link tree hand. Let them know where they can find that. Jump on over to Instagram, type in synced underscore podcast, and in our bio, you will find our link trees and... We just love to put everything we love in there. That's where our anonymous advice box is. That is where we have links still for the crime thriller offer from our last episode, Jake Craven, who has recently put out one of a recent book that Haley and I are both reading and multiple people Mm -hmm. that we know are reading. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Jake Craven, A Walk with the Dead. Amazing. 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 (laughs) I love that word. (laughs) And you can stream in our link tree. Um, We still have our links on there for Essential Aesthetics and Laser. I know Haley's hitting that place up soon. Going to get that facial with our girl Gracie. Yes, ma'am. Y'all really go get lost in there. If you want to jump down a rabbit hole, jump down the rabbit hole of the sis sees link tree do it do it all right y'all thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time on a tune in tuesday but it's actually wednesday it might be thursday be late. <laughs> <laughs> we out peace <laughs>